Hey tea heads, this is Don from Mayleaf. In this video, tasting the queen of pours. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about the very famous region of Yiwu in Yunnan, and we're gonna be unveiling our newest Sheng Pua arrival. This video is gonna go onto the single tea tastings and the drinking with friends playlist. If at any point in time you enjoy this video, then make sure you hit it with the thumbs up. The more thumbs in the air, the more tea videos are gonna come your way. And if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, Go click that button. I'm here with Celine, hello. say hello. Hello, hello, hello. 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 And it's a weekday evening for us. Normally we film on the weekends, yeah. but we no, wanted to make sure we, we, we could get this poor cake out and online so you can get your hands on it. It's a special day for us. It is. Unveiling a new poor is always an exciting thing for us. <laughs> so let's dispense with all of the build-up. Let's just get right into it. I know you're eager to uh, see this baby. Are you ready? I literally finished printing it on Monday. Monday, yeah. Monday, yeah. yeah. Ready? Here we go. Show the good people at home. Ta -ta. Introducing our latest Pua. This is Tipple Twister. <laughs> <laughs> Tipple Twister, a chameleon um, holding a uh, cocktail parasol. Um, and as you can see, this is an Iwu. This is an Iwu Sheng Pua 2017 Spring Harvest, very important. Really, really the best harvest. Spring Harvest 2017. And it is from 200 year old tea trees. Whether or not you call that a Gushu or an old uh, tea trees. I'm going to go with Gushu because 200 for me is where Gushu starts, but I'll leave that up to you to argue it out. So there we go. Let's unwrap this baby. Whew. And then we'll talk Let's about it. talk about um, Yiwu, a very, very famous region. Here we go. It's a 100 gram cake. It is a premium, premium area. And so we wanted to make sure that the pricing was gonna be okay for everyone. So it's a 100 gram cake. Why don't you show the leaves to everyone yeah. in case this camera is not picking it up properly. It's, it's so exciting when you first open a brand new cake. So really, really nice, full whole leaves, lots of bud material there. What colors would you call that? I would call it silvery lizard, <laughs> maybe because of the tipple twister the chameleon, I don't know. Okay, let's put it back down and let's take a look at it. You know, it's kind of a, it's beautiful, isn't it? It is beautiful. It's got, it's got nice large leaves. Um, we can see shades of, of kind of a, a gray jade green. You've got the darker, um, more plummy, dried plummy notes on yeah. some of the larger leaves as well. True. And you know, good hair, good hair, <laughs> good hair. Good hair. This cake's got good hair. <laughs> nice, nice furry buds there. Yeah. Really, really nice. Okay, so why don't you break into that and yes. you, I'll give that to you. Be oh, very careful. Thank you very much. Be careful with this little puck here. Oops. Whoops. It's okay, leave that no alone. Mind. So let's talk about Yiwu. Most of you have heard of Yiwu, I have no doubt. Anybody who's um, a lover of Pua teas or even you know, just dipping their toes into the world of Pua will have heard of Yiwu. It's known as the queen of Pua's with Lao Banjang, the very mm. other famous area being known as the king of Pua's. And Yiwu has a very special reputation. It has a, it has a certain cachet about it. Um, and it has a really, really kind of high price tag name. And we'll get on to the, that in a second. But let's talk about the characteristics that are commonly talked about with Iwu tea. So Iwu is the easternmost uh, Pua growing area next to Sichuan Bana. So Sichuan Bana is in the south of Yunnan and there are lots of tea plantations around Sichuan Bana, a lot to the uh, west and some to the east. Yiwu is the furthest to the east and it's a very large area. And this is where so there's some issues with uh, provenance of, mm. of Yiwu because, because it's such a big area that comprises actually six large mountainous areas. All of those areas like to call themselves Yiwu because the name commands a certain oh. reputation. Um, this tea comes from the easternmost mountainous area, also called Yiwu. 
<laughs> okay. So, so which this one is, is the so this famous? is Iwu in Iwu, um, and then there are five other mountainous areas. And within those mountainous areas, there are other there are very famous villages. So ah. it becomes more complicated. We're not going to dive right into that right now. But what we would like you to know is that this comes from Iwu in Iwu. Um, so <laughs> it's a, in you. It's a, uh, just to make that very clear. And so, yes, there's a lot of uh, tea being produced in other areas that can legitimately be called Iwu. And then there's a lot of faking going on where there's a lot of tea being produced in areas not so much in those six mountainous areas that also like to call themselves Iwu because, again, it commands uh, a reputation and therefore a good price. Yes. And yeah. the characteristics of Iwu um, in general, what people talk about in, as the characteristics of Iwu is very soft, very smooth, very easy drinking teas. Uh, teas that tend to be quite sweet, have good high notes, mm. um, have nice plummy notes, especially when aged, and mm. just generally are very... Um, easy drinking? Easy drinking, but I don't want to say easy drinking as in a, it's an oh, like everyday a, drinking right, tea. Right, right. It's very high quality, high grade, right. very smooth very um, supple tea without the harsh, um, sometimes uh, strong bitterness that is associated mm -hmm. with the king of Pu'er's, which is Lao Banjang, which is that really, oh, yeah. you know, zesty, really bright, intense, yeah. you know, intense uh, um, slightly bitter or very bitter mm. to sweet tasting Pu'er's. Right. However, in our experience with tasting Iwus, there is that characteristic, but because the area is so big, yeah. With so many variations, so many different variations in terms of the age of the tea trees, the terroir, right. the altitude, the processing, all of those things, that it is a really, really, really big generalization right. to say that Iwus are all soft, easy drinking teas. Sure. Right? Because this so, one's a bit more complex than just... Like, yeah, so we, last time we tasted this was about a month and a half ago. Yeah. Um, and it was surprising to us, but we'll talk about that in a bit. It was surprising to us. We felt that it wasn't necessarily mm. a typical a typical Iwu um, in terms of its character. The history of Iwu, well, Iwu actually historically is very famous for collecting pu'er and uh, distributing it for tribute tea for the emperors. Oh. Um, in ancient China. So it, it, it's got a lot of history with uh, pu'er trade. Um, and, um, and so all of the famous uh, pu'er tea was brought to Iwu and Iwu would uh, select teas to bring up for tribute tea. But in the 19, mid 20th century, 1940s, around 1950s, a lot of the tea production became more produ uh, factory production and was uh, moved over to the uh, west side of west oh. side to the west <laughs> to the west side of of Shishuanvana around uh, Menghai area yeah. and uh, Iwu um, really didn't produce that as much tea. Right. Um, the, it's, there's a real interesting connection between Iwu and Taiwan. Why? So the Taiwanese um, mm. started uh, to influence production in Iwu, and so a lot of there's a lot of uh, love for Iwu tea in Taiwan, and mm. they really started to um, uh, bring about. And I don't know how much of it was the Taiwanese influence, how much of it was just naturally part of the the, the uh, indigenous people of uh, mm. Iwu, but a lot of Han Chinese came in, and as well, and there was a lot of. Um, uh, movement towards very traditional handmade tea in Iwu. Right. And that's really the reputation that Iwu has, like doing things the traditional way rather than the big factory way, right. and really focusing on single estate, hand produced, mm. et cetera, et cetera, do traditional think, style. Do you think that's because of the Taiwanese coming across that they wanted to stick more to traditional? Well, that's a commonly held story uh -huh. that the Taiwanese really wanted to to build up trade of pu'er with mm. iwu and want, and really were selecting teas that were more the handmade traditional type. I'm not sure how much of that is true or right. not. All right, let's... Uh, That's pretty cool though. Let's uh, sniff the leaves and then we'll keep talking about So this, this. is like all handmade, like... So this is really... We're gonna We're gonna scope this tea in a bit. Scoop. But yes, it is really, really um, a, a true tasting grade, mm. traditional, um, traditionally produced, hand-produced Iwu. I have such a soft spot for like 
traditionally made goods. Yeah. Well, because yeah. you know, you know that love's been put into it when it's all handmade. And because you know the amount of work like they've done. Small batch and you know, yeah. Because we've done it, right? When, yeah, yeah. Remember when we had to? We've we've cooked teas, we've fried puers, we've rolled them. Oh, yeah. The amount of work. In I mean, you sweat. Oh it really my is. gosh! And you're just like, wow, they're, just, they're doing just this. Turning over the leaves, yeah, just turning over the leaves so dry as well was tiring. Then the firing was just like, oh my God, he does that for how long? <laughs> yeah. We were doing it in, in shifts, you and I, yeah. and, and it was by the end of one batch, we were exhausted. Yeah, and it's one guy doing yeah. it. Yeah. Okay, let's bring these Crazy. leaves a bit closer to the camera. Let oh, yeah. show, show everyone the leaves again. I'm gonna try and not drop any this time. Yeah, please. <laughs> there you go, nice whole leaves. Right, have the sniff, Celine, and see what you think. Oh, very clean tasting, uh, smelling. Clean. <laughs> yeah. Mm, it's really nice. It's um, slightly salty with like um, fresh meadow air, but slightly mixed into like a rainforest, but not so intense that you feel like you're in the rainforest. So you're like in the clearing. It's kind of breezy, fresh. Yeah, there's, you know there's, I, I think that there's two, there's two things happening here. There's a, a fudgy, salty fudgy, you know, I often talk about this with dry mm. leaves, isn't it? That salted toffees, mm. it's, it's really there, very, it's got a creamy note to it. That's true. It does. Um, but it's yeah. also got this, this bright... I want to say slightly soapy. Yeah, you know? it's like, yeah, um, yeah, laundry bright. Um, yeah, that fresh, kind of fresh note to it. Yeah. All right, let's uh, let's give it a rinse. Mm, it smells and good. And don't forget to feed the buffalo. We always forget these things. I fed so, him water. <laughs> oh, really? Well, he wants he wants tea. <laughs> he wants tea. He wants the gushu. So, um, why you may ask or you may not ask, but why have <laughs> is this after so many years of sourcing uh, pua? Is this the first time we've sourced an iwu, considering its fame? Well, its fame is part of the reason why it's taken so long for us to, to do this. Because when you have a very famous area that commands a very high price, then there you go. Aww. Then you have uh, always in tea in tea sourcing. There's always the issue of provenance, of making sure that you are, that you are, what, what is it? Nothing, I was gonna smother these and then I thought I should probably wait for well, you. Well, no, no, you can smother these. There's always this, this issue of whether or not you're getting the right leaves from the right area. And you know, so it's all about building relationships as much as possible, really, really building relationships. Um, and even then, you know, just unless you literally follow the leaves from picking all the way and you, you watch them go on the, tr on the, on the motorbike usually, <laughs> on the bag, down to the, to, to the farmer's house and you watch Try. every single step of the way, there's always the chance there's a bit, of, a bit of nefarious activity happening. However, it's all about building up good relationships. And with Yiwu, whenever there's a higher price tag and a higher uh, reputation, there's always extra risk of fakery. And there's a lot of faked Iwu out there. Mm. So we were really cautious making sure that we only sourced Iwu when we really knew that it was true Iwu coming from exactly the area that they're saying it's mm. coming from. Especially with high price ticket items, we want to make sure, you know, that really, really we yeah, do the, the we due diligence there and make sure it is genuinely Iwu. This is definitely genuinely Iwu. Mm. I'm going to quickly scope the tea for you. Season, spring 2017. It's a spring picked tea. There's a lot of autumn iwu out there. This mm. is a spring picked tea. Um, cultivar Daiyajong uh, variety, mm. um, the Samica variety. Um, the origin, as I said, iwu in iwu. <laughs> I love uh, that. Iwu in iwu. Um, and uh, where we uh, source this from, very important, is we source this from the... Um, uh, Gushu Pua Institute. Oh, yeah. um, and so, you know, this is why we really have built up ties with, with, with um, lots of different farmers, but this mm. institute as well, to really, uh, because this is all about assessing the, uh, the, the uh, verity of these tea leaves. 
Um, elevation, very high altitude. This is 1,800 meters, which is one of the reasons Ooh, nice. why Iwu are so highly valued. That's really high elevation, you know, top, top elevation tea. 1,800 meters um, and age around 200 years old, as mm. I said. And again, wanting to make sure that we try to, to, to be as accurate as possible. Mm. It's around 200 years old. Um, and again, it comes from the conservation base, from the uh, Gushu Institute. Gushu Institute. Okay, so let's have a sniff of these leaves. It smells yum. <sighs> like there's, there's a creamy, like, you know how you were saying there's creamy note in the dry leaf? Now it's like really there. But it's so complex. It's not really just a zesty or soapy or earthy tea. It's got a bit of everything in it. It does. It, it is very... Like a nice it's, it's, level It's very interesting. From the smell. You've got cream. It's that, got that white rabbit yeah. candy thing going on. Those Chinese cream sweets. Yeah. That's what she's referring to. <laughs> I bring that sometimes. But, is, but it is um, zesty, very mm. zesty. It does have a lot of citrus in it as well. Mm. Definitely a lot of citrus. Minerals are shining through. You're yeah. really picking up the minerals. I'm smelling the rockiness of it. Yeah, that's the fresh bit. You know? It's a really, really, really nice play on uh, warm and bright notes together. Okay. It's most comforting and, and energizing at the same yeah. time. So, let's talk, yeah, go for it. Um, briefly, talking about the art, uh, artwork, we'll get back onto it, but this is what we felt when we, um, did you, do you want to do it unfiltered or filtered? Unfiltered. Okay. This is what we felt when we, <laughs> when we tasted this tea, when we selected this tea, that what we loved about this mm. tea was this um, changing, shifting, balance of flavors and aromas it's going to be interesting after a month and a half to see whether or not this still persists we'll be honest if it isn't and we'll have to change our tasting notes but <laughs> it's it, it, it we felt that it, it had a really interesting combination that was shifting and so we felt that the chameleon the way that it adapts to its environment we felt that that was a nice um, symbol for this tea right let's show the color of the liquor Ah. Is this the rinse or is it? no? This is it, right? This is it. Let's show the color of the liquor. Can I go closer? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, so it is quite bright, you know, for a pu'e. It's, it's got a, a really light uh, um, touch about it. Mm. Uh, it's got, I would say, a sort of grapefruit, green, yellow, with a mm. bit of orange quality to it. <laughs> so yes, throwing all the colors <laughs> yeah. out there. But what, what strikes me is the brightness of it. Um, and you'll notice, where's that cover? I wish I could can light a, cover? A, sh a light, shine, shine a light, light on it. We can it. do that. Because it's kind of, it looks like it's got a lot of hairs in it. Okay, so here we go. Here's put a torch on it. Ooh. Really, really milky. It almost reminds me of a Japanese green tea yeah. in its luminous quality. It's quite thick. It's thick and, and cloudy, really, really Oh yeah, I can see all the hairs A now. lot of sediment. Let's get on with tasting. Tasting. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, Gushu guys. Yiwu, the tipple twister. The tipple twister. Really, really, what, wow. what's... Um, so the, oh. um, the texture is medium in yeah. terms of body. And that really suits the flavor of it because the flavor of it mm. is, it starts off with this sweet creaminess, but you get this citrus yeah. zing to just, it. Just on the side there, like as you drink more and more and it fills your mouth, you get this zing on the side, which is not a bitter, like no. stringent, horrible thing. It's like a really nice, like the flavor of lemon on your palate, you know? Yeah, rather it's, it's than got that the real citrus note. You've lemon. got something on your nose. Oh, okay. thank you. <laughs> um, here. Thank you very much. Let's have, a, let's have another infusion of it, um, and then we can really assess its, its bitterness or no bitterness. Oh my God, it's so good. It's so, it's so smooth. It's like, very, at the moment, yes, let's, as I said, let's do another mm. brew of it and then we can assess it, make sure the temperature's up. Mm. Um, That's yum. I'm getting zest, a lot of citrus. So we're doing relatively short infusions, as always, 
when we're brewing these, uh, these gushu pours, we want to make sure we control the amount of intensity of the brew. But, you know, obviously, brew as hard as you want, guys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm sure there's a Go lot of you it. out there that like to brew harder. Okay, second infusion is always going to be less cloudy because you've stripped off a lot of the, 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 bud, the fluffy bud uh, material. So you can see here, less cloudy, yeah. but still bright, but definitely darker now. So now we're, we're entering more of a, an orange tone to it. It's, yeah, it's more like a apple juice. Yeah. Maybe yeah. darker than that even. Yeah. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, guys. Oh, mm. Super refreshing. So good. It's like, yeah, super zesty. Zest, zest, zest. It's really like just, you've taken zest. It's, it's like orange grapefruit, mm. more orange zest, I would mm. say. Definitely when, more orange. When you breathe out through your nose, it's an intense, zesty, zesty experience. <laughs> zesty experience. Yeah, it reminds me of um, when you uh, drink cran cranberry juice. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, it's got that refreshing... Quenching. Quenching. It's got that yeah. dry, yeah, it's got that dry, quenching sensation, but in a really nice way, not in a, in a catching, overly dry way, yeah. not, nothing chalky. It's no. got this really nice, dry quench. It has got bitterness, but the bitterness is much more of the botanical, botanical yeah. citrus peel yeah. bitterness and not really, nothing like a pharmaceutical bitterness at all. No. And the, the bitterness so is transforming thing. into sweetness. I'm getting the sweetness that you were talking about mm. before. Really now I'm getting the sweetness. So overall we're talking about uh, uh, lower notes of mm. some... Bit of cream. Some cream, some leather, some... Um, Mm. Mineral mm. dryness, a bit rocky, rocky, rocky mineral dryness, and then this real zesty and sweetness. Yeah, well, the sweetness is more hui gan sweetness. The taste is not so sweet. No, true. But but you're getting this zest, real bright um, citrus, mm. and then the bitterness transforms to sweetness. It's such a beautiful journey it's, in the mouth. It's very. It's actually quite complex, isn't it? Even it though is. it's. It's very zesty and bright, but yeah. it's, yeah, it's got those creamy notes and it just keeps you wanting to have more. I know more. what you mean. You have, you have the fact that it's, it's it, is, it is simple in ways because mm. the flavors are really pronounced and easy to pinpoint, yeah. but it's still complex. Why don't you show the camera the artwork? And we'll quickly talk about this artwork here. It's delicious, man. It's, it's delicious. It's so good, yeah. Show the artwork. So, uh, as you can it. tell, the reason why we <laughs> made it such a bright yellow colour is because we love the brightness of this tea, the brightness mm -hmm. of the liquor, the brightness of those high zesty aromatics. Um, the comedian is holding a parasol, a cocktail parasol, and we called it Tipple Twister because we felt that um, mm -hmm. the flavours were re really reminiscent of those those cocktails, those, um, those aperitif cocktails, like a gin and tonic, mm. where you've got those botanical bitters, you've got those herbal yeah. bitters, and then you've got those really bright, zesty notes of peel, the twist, so tipple twister, yeah. tipple being an alcoholic drink, twist being the, the twist, plus there's a little play on words there, considering the chameleon has the quite hands. pinchy, a bit pinchy hands there, um, but that's <laughs> a separate thing. So yes, we felt that this really had a sort of cocktail quality to it, mm. a, a very early beginning of the evening cocktail quality like a GNT. Yeah, you know, it's funny because I had someone asking, do you have a gin and tonic in the tea shop? <laughs> well, now, they came in asking for a gin and tonic. No, they were like joking, oh, you know, okay. when I was talking well, about tea. Well, now you've got something. <laughs> got something. When you show the leaves to everyone out there, can you show the leaves to everyone out oh, there? Oh, yeah, sorry. So, nice whole leaves. Um, let's have a feel of them. I think that they're going to be quite thick and pliable. I'm going to go for a big one. Oops. Yeah, nice. Really nice. Um, Ooh. Good, good elasticity. Nice. Relatively thick, um, but elastic stalks. Yeah. The smell always, the smell of the empty gong dabe always reveals more of the 
the warm notes. You can just pick up those zesty notes after you've poured, but they will soon uh, dissipate because those are the mm. really bright, high aromatics. I'm getting a slightly salty, slightly sweet, starchy, sweet and starchy, like, um, like, um, Mmm, it's like glutinous rice with some mm. custard. Yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's got a glutinous rice starchy note to it, doesn't it? Yeah. But sweet as well. I totally forgot the sweetness of that. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of the sweetness. You know when you have tofu fa, the to oh, tofu pudding, yeah. they, they use that brown orange sugar. Yeah, the one with that, yeah, with the um, sugar. Yeah, it's like an orange sugar. Is it a palm sugar? I I'm not know. sure. If anybody you know, if, if anybody out there knows no. what kind of sugar they use for those tofu mm. puddings, the tofu far puddings, um, it has that yeah. dark sugar note to it. I love that. Right. Um, oh my God. We've done the smell of the empty Gongda Bay. We've the finish, as we said, dry, slight, nicely restrained bitterness, moving to a hui gan sweetness. Mm. Not so much a minty, uh, minty sweetness, no. more like just a, a very a sugary sweetness. Um, mm. We should probably drink a few of these infusions. I think so. We'll come back after about five or six infusions and let mm. you know how we feel. We are back and this is the sixth infusion we have here, still going, really, really rich color. You will get lots of infusions out of this one. For sure. For sure. In terms of body sensation, <clears throat> what are you thinking? What are you feeling? I feel that I'm quite chatty. I would say I'm, I'm quite energized compared to earlier. Um, definitely, yeah, more conversive. Conversive, is that a word? Yeah, conversive, conversive. yeah. So, mm. yeah, it's... Uh, upbeat. An upbeat. Nicely energizing, nothing too extreme. It's not one of those heating teas that's going to, yeah. like, set a fire inside you. Yeah. It's, it's a really... It's like a G&T. Yeah, it's, exactly. It it's, really that, is. it's that it really perfect is. beginning to the evening. It's going to get you chatty. It's going to give you energy. Mm. It does make you feel a little bit tipsy, a little bit lightheaded, but no, nothing, nothing extreme. Crazy. Certainly nothing like, you know, the king of Pu'er's La Banjang or anything like that. But definitely a nice uplifting feeling. Mm. Is this representative of an Iwu? You know, the characteristics of an iwu, as I said, is easy drinking, mm. soft, uh, very low bitterness, mm. um, sweet. Mm. I think in some ways it is. I think the bitterness is there, but it's really lovely and restrained. Mm. It is a really easy drinker, mm. but it's not the silky smooth. It's much more refreshing, quenching, yeah, and um, bright. Yeah, I like the fact that the effect kind of refle is yeah. reflective of the taste. Mm. Which you don't, I, you know, you don't always have that with a, with a cake, so it's, yeah. it's, it's cool. No, I know what you mean. It really is. It's a, the, the package is a very, uh, from a branding exercise, <laughs> it's a really coherent, you know, uh, uh, a tea. It has mm. the color, the flavor, and the effect are all really, really meshing together mm. very, very well. Yummy. Mm -mm -mm. And it's a small batch. Isn't and it? what's really interesting when you drink it is you get this still this warming sensation when it first hits your mouth and then that moves to that uh, citrus and then the refreshing, brisk mineral dryness. It's, it's a great journey. It's a really nice arc in your mouth. Really, really lovely. Mm. So there you go. One last time, tipple twister. Do you want to show the, oh. the, the package? No, not another infusion. We'll drink more, <laughs> but... Uh, tipple twister. There you go. Uh, tipple twister, gosh. Gushu. I'm calling it Gushu. Gushu Yiwu. Pua 2017, Tipple Twister, okay. Yeah. Let us know if you grab one, what you think. Make sure you post anything on Instagram and let us know your comments so yeah. we see what your tasting notes are. That's it, T-Heads. Yeah. If you made it to the end of this video, then make sure you hit it with a thumbs up. Check out our YouTube playlist and let us know if there are any videos that you'd like us to make. If you're ever in London, then come visit us in Camden to say hi and taste our wares. If you have any questions, or comments, then please fire them over. Other than that, this is Celine. I'm Don from Mayleaf. <laughs> Thank you for being a part of the revelation of true tea. Stay away from those tea bags. Keep drinking the good stuff and spread the word because, because nobody, nobody deserves, deserves bad, bad tea. tea. Bye. Bye.